Hello and welcome to today's video where we're looking at Rule 18, Responsibilities Between Vessels. As always we're going to be looking at the rule itself and then applying it in a couple of different situations. So Rule 18 establishes a hierarchy of vessels, saying that a power driven vessel needs to keep out of the way of a great big list of others and then it will go down putting them all in order. However, the very first sentence is a crucial one, except where rules 9, 10 and 13 otherwise require, 9 being narrow channels, 10 being traffic separation schemes and 13 being overtaking vessels. So we already know rule 13 says overtaking vessels always keep out of the way, so the hierarchy does not apply, and rules 9 and 10 direct specific vessels to do specific things. So what is this hierarchy that it establishes? Well, it's kind of common sense really. It places not under command right at the top, along with restricted in her ability to manoeuvre. It doesn't actually differentiate between the two of these in the rule, but common sense would say not under command is unable to manoeuvre due to some exceptional circumstance, and restricted ability to manoeuvre is only unable due to the nature of her work. So if she has to, she can stop that work and get out of the way of a not under command. The next one down would be a fishing vessel, followed by a sailing vessel, followed by a power driven vessel. Of course a power driven vessel having to keep out of everyone's way as we saw in paragraph A. Paragraphs B and C go on to clarify that, saying sailing vessels need to keep out of the way of not under command restricted ability to manoeuvre and a fishing vessel. And paragraph C says fishing vessels keep out of the way of not under command and restricted in their ability to manoeuvre. So, once we've got this hierarchy, what does that actually look like? So for these we're going to use this key with the passenger vessel being power driven, the sailing boat, the fishing boat, CBD we're going to take as a large container ship, restricted in ability to manoeuvre, we're going to take as a red tanker, and a not under command we're going to take as a green bulk carrier. I'll leave this key on the screen so we always know what's going on. And I'm just going to place a fleet of ships down here at anchor so it's easy for me to get hold of them. So let's take a look at the first situation. Here we've got the power driven vessel approaching the sailing vessel. Of course when it's two different vessels and risk of collision exists rule 18 will apply which says power driven vessel underway has to keep out of the way of, among other things, a sailing vessel. So all that's going to happen is it's going to alter around to port and pass clear astern of the sailing vessel. Now Rule 18 doesn't say what action you have to take, it just says that you need to keep out of the way of. So coming around to port in this situation is absolutely fine. Now, the next one we're going to look at is the sailing vessel approaching a vessel restricted in her ability to manoeuvre. As always there's going to be risk of collision because the bearing is going to be constant. And we know we're going to be keeping out of the way because it's Rule 18, so the sailing vessel has to keep out of the way of, among other things, a vessel restricted in ability to manoeuvre. Again, doesn't say what action she's got to take, she's just got to keep out of the way. So in this case she's come down and she's heading south and keeping well clear of the vessel restricted in her ability to manoeuvre. Now the final one I'm going to look at clarifies that very first sentence. We've got the power driven vessel being overtaken by a vessel not under command. Now, of course, this is just to illustrate the rule. In reality, a not under command really shouldn't actually be moving. And if they are, they're unable to manoeuvre anyway. But we're looking at the rule. So the vessel overtaking still has to keep out of the way. So the not under command in this case will have to make an alteration, of course, to starboard and pass well clear of the power driven vessel. Part D then goes on to say, any vessel other than not under command or restricted ability to manoeuvre needs to avoid impeding the safe passage of a vessel constrained by a draft. So this means fishing vessels, sailing vessels and power driven vessels all need to Im avoid impeding the safe passage of a vessel constrained by a draft. Now exactly what we mean by this is clarified actually a little bit in Rule 8 which talks about action to avoid collision. But I'll just explain it back on the diagram. So in this diagram we've got a power driven vessel approaching a vessel constrained by a draft, which is the container ship. Now we've seen that the power driven vessel has to avoid impeding the safe passage of the constrained by a draft. The exact things that she has to do is clarified in Rule 8. But she's going to come round very early 
allow the constraint bar draft to continue without having to deviate of course and then she's going to come back and pass well clear a stern. If we come back though to the start of this and just let the power driven vessel run on a little bit rule 8 actually says as soon as risk of collision exists the constraint by a draft needs to comply with the rules as she would anyway which means this would be a crossing situation still and the constrained by a draft would have to keep out of the way of the power driven vessel now being constrained by a draft she cannot really deviate from the course she is following otherwise she wouldn't be constrained by a draft so her only option is to slow right down and let the power driven vessel pass clear ahead of course the power driven vessel is in the wrong here they should have come round and avoided impeding the safe passage but under the collision regulations the CBD remains the give way vessel and must give way still the second part of part D of course clarifies this a little bit saying vessel constrained by a draft shall navigate with particular caution having full regard to a special condition of course that special condition being she cannot deviate from the course so her only option is to slow right down she's got to be able to do that in an instant and the final bits of the rule seaplane on the water shall in general keep well clear of all other vessels however where risk of collision exists she needs to comply with the rules of this part of course she's a vessel propelled by machinery so she would be a power driven vessel F says a winging ground craft taking off landing or in flight needs to keep well clear of all other vessels this is kind of obvious because a winging ground craft would be travelling at incredible speed and other vessels wouldn't be able to react in time however when it's only operating on the water surface needs to comply with the rules of this part as a power driven vessel again it's a vessel propelled by machinery so that makes complete sense now I'm just going to take us back to the diagram and explain a situation that was asked in a previous rule what I've got here is a power driven vessel proceeding ahead with a vessel restricted in her ability to maneuver out on the port side of course you could say these are two power driven vessels and it's a crossing situation but because these vessels are a different status the power driven vessel has to keep out of the way now you could think oh it might be a crossing situation so the red vessel could come round so the most common sense thing would say the power driven vessel should make a bold alteration of course to starboard and she could parallel the course of the vessel restricted in ability to maneuver or she could just pass well clear ahead Either way, under Rule 18, the power-driven vessel needs to keep out of the way of a vessel restricted in her ability to manoeuvre. That brings us to the end of Rule 18. We've established the hierarchy of vessels, which you can see up on the screen at the moment. We've also seen how the bottom three vessels in that hierarchy need to avoid impeding the safe passage of a vessel constrained by a draft. And we've seen how it all works together in the diagram and how Rule 18 actually says what you need to do when two different vessels are approaching. Hopefully you've learnt something new in this video. If you have, a thumbs up is always appreciated. If you've got any questions, just leave them on the comments below. And until next time, thank you for watching, and goodbye.